Greetings and welcome to this edition of Positronic Hypersonic. I'm Barry P. Cook. Let's talk about chapter five of season one of the book of Boba Fett. This episode is called Return of the Mandalorian. I did not know that these episodes had actual titles. I don't know how I forgot that. I guess they did the same thing with The Mandalorian, the chapter number, and then a title. I've been ignoring the titles. I've just been saying they're called chapter one, chapter two, et cetera, but I was incorrect. So chapter five, Return of the Mandalorian, starts off with the return of the Mandalorian. Din Djarin shows up in the beginning of this episode. He's looking for a guy named Kaiba Baz at a meatpacking plant of some kind. And he finds him, though the guy denies that he is him. A fight ensues and Mando wields the Darksaber against his opponents, accidentally wounding himself, but ultimately slicing his target in half at the waist <laughs> and taking his head as bounty. He then limps his way to turning in his bounty for information on a cool space rig kind of place in the middle of space, a like space ring, I should say, which I guess resembles something out of Halo that I'm not familiar with because I didn't play Halo, but the memes are all over the interspace nets. And then he goes to a location he is told of by his client where he finds a Mandalorian armorer who has his wound seen to and who takes an interest in the Darksaber. And I think it's the same armor that he saw or that that he saw in in the mandalorian in the early episodes she tells him the lore of the saber and asks him to join her covert which i guess is like a coven i don't know a group and they discuss his besker spear which he got during the episodes of the mandalorian and he has them melt it because beskar metal is supposed to be used for armor, not weapons. So he has it melted down and has it forged into something for Grogu that he plans to bring to him. And she also tells him about Bo-Katan and the near, extinction, the near extinction of the Mandalore people. She then engages Mando in training exercises to help him learn to wield the Darksaber. When he struggles to do so, he's challenged for it by the armorer's associate, Paz Vizig, or Paz Vizik. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, who thinks maybe Mando isn't worthy of it. But Mando gets the better of him, only to be asked after the fight if he's ever removed his helmet, at which point he admits that he has and is then excommunicated from, I guess, Mandalorianness, pending redemption by his bathing in the waters of a stream in the mines of Mandalore, which I guess he now is going to try to get to. He's then forced to surrender his weapons upon boarding a commercial flight to Tatooine because, of course, he doesn't have his razor crest. And when he gets there and arrives at Moss Eisley, he runs into his mechanic friend, or he goes to see his mechanic friend, who he ends up rescuing from a creature that's attacking her, who I guess had found a ship for him at his request, but it isn't a razor crest like he asked. It's an N1 starfighter from Naboo, which he seems displeased with, <laughs> as I guess he was led to believe she was, in fact, going to find him a razor crest, but at her suggestion, he decides to help her get the N1 up to snuff, at which point it comes out that she gets some of her parts from Jawas, one of whom she had once dated, at which point Mando asks if the Jawas can get some parts that he wants, and they say that they can. They finish the ship, and Mando flies it around the rocky plains of Tatooine, over near the area from the pod race scene from Phantom Menace. And there's even some scenery that's still there, which I guess took him through Beggar's Canyon. It's just like Beggar's Canyon back home. Where we see a womp rat. Well, I used to bullseye womp rats in my T-16 back home. Which is interesting. Before he then takes it to space, where he encounters an X-Wing patrol, one of the pilots being the guy that sort of rescued him from that episode he was involved with, the giant spider in previous episodes of Mandalorian. And they point out that his transponder is kind of iffy. And they start asking him questions, you know, are you that guy? Do I know you from somewhere? At which point he kind of just tries to bluff his way through, but then he takes off like super vet and goes back to the mechanics place at Moss Eisley, where he is approached by Fennec Shand, asking him to help Boba, which he agrees to do, but says he's got to go see his little friend first. So we may even see Grogu in the next episode of the book of Boba Fett, unless they 
to say that he went to see him off screen. We'll have to wait and see. I thought this was a good episode. It was good to see Din Djarin again. I was bummed that we didn't see Boba Fett at all, but Boba Fett appeared on Mandalorian, so this was only fair play, I guess. And the mechanic character is hilarious. So all the exchanges with her were really cool. She talks about how she's dated Jawas a couple of different times and she talks about how they're furry and she speaks with earth vernacular. And so it's kind of funny. Uh, she also speaks Jawese, which you'd never have seen a humanoid person do in Star Wars. Well, I guess the Jawas are kind of humanoid, but you know what I'm saying? An average height person whose face you can see, <laughs> you never see them speak Jawese. You never see the mouth move when the Jawas speak Jawese themselves. So it was pretty cool. <laughs> She's making all these sounds and coming out of a, a woman. It was pretty funny. The flying sequences were great. It was kind of an A-team vibe where they're working on the ship and trying to get it up to snuff. And the scenes when he's with the armorer were pretty cool because there was a lot of backstory and exposition that takes place and sort of bringing people up to date on events that we wouldn't know about if we hadn't seen the Clone Wars show, for example, or if we forgot what we saw on the Clone Wars show, as is in the case of this person. So that was cool. And that's really it. Uh, it was a decent episode, nothing spectacular, but it was good stuff. And I'm looking forward to next week as usual. I'll be back with a review of that episode once it is released. Until then, my friends, I wish you peace and long life.